Good afternoon from beautiful Brisbane, Australia. How are you? And how are you going? We're changing seasons down here, so no more singlets, no more lack of jumpers. <laughs> We're getting into the chill factor. I just thought I'd drop by this afternoon and give you a quick tip for trauma recovery coaching if you're entering into it, or therapy if you're entering into it. Duck down to your local newsagent, your local uh, Walmart in America. I'm not sure what the UK equivalent is, or your Woolies. Do you have Woolies in the UK? And grab yourself a notebook. It doesn't have to be sparkly pink. It was the only one on the shelf. But here's what we're going to do. When you start going to therapy, you, <laughs> you'll like my mess, you want to be able to write stuff down random, ad hoc. You want to be able to take notes because things will stand out for you that you want to be able to grab hold of and process a bit more. So think it through, feel it through. How does that fit into my everyday life? Do I want it to keep fitting into my everyday life? We want to be able to ask those questions. And if you're watching my videos on YouTube, grab yourself a little notebook because when it comes to complex PTSD, we are primarily visual. Most of us, generally speaking, however you want to put it, we're very visual creatures. So what we want to be able to do is pick up our notebook and we don't have to read it through. We don't have to obsess about it. We don't have to focus on it. But what we can do is when we're making notes at the therapy or trauma recovery coaching, we can pick up the book later on and go, Ah, uh, yeah, that's a good point that I want to think about while I'm going about my job. While I'm, you know, because if we've been in our job for a while, we're an automatic pilot a lot of the time. We just are able to know what we need to do. And what we want to be able to do is pick it up and go, Oh, yeah, I want to really experience how I can fit that into my life or how I'm stuck on this point. And what I can do to bring in many different facets of it into my day-to-day -day life. So what does that mean? It means if if I go to therapy, a counsellor, the coaching, it means I'm going to really get raw and honest with myself. Get real. We're going to get down and get real. And we're going to say, right, I made a note that I wanted to learn more about procrastination because remember procrastination for complex trauma is different to normal procrastination and I will post the link to the video down below and I want to be able to begin identifying from the outside in the set of circumstances that keep coming up where I find myself procrastinating. So say I was sitting here and I was going down, the, you know, the lumpy tunnel of Facebook, you know, out there into Never Never Land and forgetting that time is something I need to manage. I'd go, right, make a note of it. And then I'd go through back through my notes and say, oh, that's right. I need to put into sequence what are the events that lead me to procrastinating so when we've got a sequence of events over a certain period of time, we begin to see a pattern. And when we begin to see the pattern, then we can begin to dig as to what I'm believing at this point in time. Changing thoughts is not the only thing we need to do with complex trauma. People who say the only thing that we need to do is change our thoughts have no comprehension about complex trauma. Trauma maybe, but complex trauma, no. If changing our thoughts was the only thing we had to do, I would have done it over 30 years ago and I wouldn't have lost my life to complex trauma and had to rebuild, okay? So I want you to be assured it's not just your thoughts. It's not just your emotions. We've got to be able to put that pattern together and bring it together as to what ultimately has triggered us into procrastination. That's one way of looking at it. Uh, another question that we can ask ourselves is, how do I feel about what's happening around me? And a really pointed question is, where do I feel that I can't manage what's happening around me? Okay, that is, it's 
a really cool question to ask because when we ask that, we get really, really real and raw with what we're avoiding. Because if we're procrastinating, what are we avoiding? Okay. Um, I often, when we're proactive in our recovery, I find that uh, I can often forget to manage my time and I often have a pattern of going, well, I'll just do this, this, this and this and then I'll get to the thing that's important. And I find this all the time that the thinking is back to front mind. <laughs> I have to learn and I'm still teaching myself to this day, do the important thing first because you love it, okay, and then everything else will feel easy to do. So when we turn it around, it becomes like, oh, yeah, I'm happy to go spend an hour writing, doing what I love because I'll get to the other things and feel good about them. Okay, so there's some hot tips. Remember, hot tip today is grab a book. Now, I, oh, my bag's not handy, but I actually have same size but a thinner version of this that I carry around in my handbag because sometimes I'm aware of things when I'm out and our short-term memory plays such a big role in why we need a book, all right, because we don't really have short-term memory. Well, if you like me, you're still working on trying to find it. Uh, and so I find that if I write it down in my book, it's easier to go reference and say, because we seem to remember, oh, yeah, a couple of days ago I wrote something down that's related to what I need to know today. And then I go back and look at it, oh, yeah, that puts that piece of the puzzle into place. Another thing you can do if you're more technologically inclined, and I love technology, I just find that the written word is more productive for us, all right? It's the whole visual thing. And so on, hang on, on our phones, we can go into the notes section, all right? I have lots of notes that I forget about. It's the written word that does it for me. And we can make notes, all right? It's, if you're using technology frequently, then do notes. If you're not, do written words, okay? And even if you've got a little notepad and write them down and just jot ideas down, you begin to observe the outside. Remember, we're going to observe the outside in order that we, as we write things down, we're going to get hold of what the pattern is that we're holding on to. And all that was out of just go grab a notebook and write things down so that you can help your short-term memory remember. Okay, have a gorgeous day. Let me know if that's going to work for you or not. Or is there something else? So if you go, oh, this is not going to work for me, blah, blah, blah. I want to know how you're going to get proactive and make it happen for you. How are you going to learn to observe the outside to help you understand what's happening on the inside? We have to have external and internal integration. Okay, gang, bye for now. And I'll see you in the morning for another YouTube not YouTube, Facebook Live, and uh, I look forward to helping along the recovery journey some more. Bye for now.